Hello, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Yasser Ahmed. So in this video, we're going to be looking at paper three from the CIE ICT IGCC course. And we're going to be doing a May, June 2020 paper. So remember guys, this was the paper which was canceled due to COVID-19. We're doing variant 31. And remember paper three is a two hour and 30 minute long practical paper, which includes data analysis, spreadsheets, and a website section, okay. So before we start, just check to see if you have received the following source files. So you can check your folder. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, eight files in total. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And if you want to check out the details of the files, you can do. So you can see we have some um, picture files, PNG, uh, CSV files, probably for the spreadsheet task. And then there's a CSS, CSS file here as well. And have a look at this picture here, it's quite big in size. So maybe we may be doing something with this picture, maybe editing this picture to make it a bit smaller. Anyway, let's have a look at the first task. So task one is going to be evidence document. So we have to create a new word process document. So if I go to my source folder, let me right click, click on new and select Microsoft Word document or you can simply open up Word and create a new document like this. Let's call this Actually, let's see if there's a specific name. Save this evidence document into your work area as J2031-evidence, followed by your candidate number. So for this example, I will use 1234 for my candidate number. So let me just rename this file. 1234, and let's open up the file. So in this evidence document, we need to make sure we include your name, center number and candidate number on every page. So I'm going to include this into the header. For center number, I will use 5678. Okay, so let me go to insert. There's no information about alignment. It doesn't have to be on the left, in the right, at the top or the bottom. But I'm just going to go with this header option here, which gives us three columns. I'm going to write my name here, center number 5678 and then my candidate number which is 1234. Obviously in the exam you guys need to refer to your own center and candidate details. Okay, save the changes. Let me just highlight this. So basically you will need your evidence documents during the examination to place screenshots when required. Okay, so let's now look at task two. So in this video, we're going to be focusing on the website section of this paper. So let me just highlight task two. You are going to create a web page and edit a style sheet for uh, this company here. So gaming computers, the web page and style sheet must work in any browser. All color codes must be in hexadecimal. Make sure your style sheet contains no HTML. Okay, so that's just some generic information. What we need to do for question one is to create a new folder called TGC. So you notice it's all in capital letters. So let's make go to your source folder, create a new folder, rename the folder. And then what we need to do is to locate the following files and store them in your new folder. So it should be four PNG files or five actually. So let's move to five PNG files. So if I press control, I can select multiple files at the same time so that's one two three four five let's move them and then the last one was the css file and um, yeah so five png files which are graphic files and uh, one two three four yeah and then one css file which we're probably going to be editing okay display the contents of your tgc folder showing a folder name or file extensions or file names, extensions, image dimensions, and file sizes. So if I go into the folder, uh, let's show the details. Uh, what we need to include, if you right click on the top here, we need to include dimensions. We don't need tags, so I can take tags off. Um, okay, let me double check. So folder name and file names will be folder name is here. File names are here. 
Okay, that's done. Extensions and image dimensions. So that's a file type here. That's the image size and then dimensions. Okay, so yeah, file sizes. Yep, yeah, that's done. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a screenshot and then we're going to be placing this first screenshot into your evidence document. Make sure the folder name and all file names, extensions, image dimensions, and file sizes are clearly visible. Okay, so let me just take the front screen. Um, again, as mentioned in previous videos, if you want to use a snipping tool, it's up to you. Um, whatever you find easier to use, or what, whatever you're most comfortable using, basically. Um, right, let me paste in my print screen. The main thing you need to remember is make sure the print screen is nice and clear, so crop off any parts which are not necessary. Um, okay. And then you can increase the size of the print screen. So here you can see the name of the folder. You can see the file names, the file types so or extensions, the size and the dimensions of the pictures. Save the changes. That's your first evidence done. Okay, so question two. We need to create a new web page. Okay, so the software that I'm going to be using is going to be Microsoft Expression Web 4. So let me open it up this software. So it's a normally a free software which you can download. Okay, and we're going to be creating this table here. So whilst the software is loading up, um, the first thing we need to do is create a new web page called TGC. Let me just copy that. And then we're going to be creating a table structure shown below. So before we create the table structure, let's identify how many rows and columns we're going to have. So one, two, three, four rows, and we're going to have three columns. Okay. Um, so when you get when you get into Web Expression, you can change the view. So this, so this is a HTML here. You can split the HTML. And a design view or we can go into the design view let me first of all save this um, page okay go to your source folder and then just enter the name before the dot HTML okay so once you've saved the page um, you should see the name change up here you can go to your folder yep here's a new HTML page now we're going to create the table as shown so remember we said it's going to be four rows so one, two, three, four, and then three columns. Okay, so to create a table, we click on table, insert table, let's select, select how many rows we have, and columns, we're going to have three. Okay, when I create a table, I always look at the size going across. So the table will be 750 pixels wide. So remember, let's have a look guys down here. All dimensions are in pixels. Okay, each table cell is identified with a letter. The letters and dimensions shown in the table must not appear on your final web page. The table shows the spacing between cells which will be set when your star sheet is edited in step 10. Table borders must not appear on the final web page. So we can do this later in the star sheet. Um, so we're first going to be setting a table as 750 pixels wide. So in pixels we want to specify how wide the table is. The height we can enter later when we adjust the size of the cells. Okay, so four rows, three columns, 750 pixels wide in pixels, yep. Yeah. Let's press OK. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to merge the cells. So you, you'll notice the top row has been merged. So you simply highlight the cells, right click your mouse, click on modify and click on merge cells uh, this cell here has been merged down so highlight the two cells right click modify merge the cells okay so now we're going to put the dimensions in so this cell here the height is the second number it should be 100 pixels high or tall so you can right click on a cell you go to cell properties um, 
if I enter 750 again, it's not going to change the size of this cell because it's already set to 750. But you can type it again if you want. But let's enter the height and make sure you have selected pixels. Apply. Done. If you click on that cell and go to the code view, let's have a look at the code view. So TD refers to the cell. TR refers to the row. So remember, we open the tag and then we close the tag uh, with a backward slash. So this first cell spans across three columns. Remember, um, this cell has been merged across this column, this column, and this column. Okay. And then we got the size dimensions of the cell. So 750 pixels wide, and height is 100 pixels. Okay. Um, we also have another row. Okay. So if I highlight this here and then go to design you can see we've highlighted this row here okay um, right what do we need to do next so this one is going to be 260 by 470 so let's right click here cell properties let me double check uh, 260 470 apply okay and these ones will be all the same 225 by 225 actually going all the way down so highlight all of the cells right click cell properties 225 225 click on apply and then let's have a look here this final cell should be 260 by 225 so right click cell properties that's okay so the most important thing is if you go to the code view you can see the sizes are shown here for each of the cells and at the end of this exam paper or this part of the exam you are going to be copying or screenshotting this code into your evidence document so this is what's going to be getting marked all the dimensions and sizes here okay so done and uh, let's save the changes okay and remember guys we probably are going to be editing the CSS file later on um, regarding the padding yeah so the spacing between the cells yep okay okay let's now look at question three so enter in cell a the text to our gaming computers so obviously you guys will have to type this in so cell a is going to be the top row here so let me just highlight this so I know I've done this first row so if I go back to expression click on the top row obviously type in the text I can copy and paste since I've got the paper in front of me in electronic format and then what do we need to do next we need to apply this to style h1 so h1 refers to heading 1 so you can highlight the text you can come up here and you can apply heading 1 this may change later if we attach a style sheet so that's fine for now question 4 place in cell B the image 2031-logo.png so this should be in our source folder uh, let me check where cell B is so cell B is going to be this cell here to insert a picture we can click on the cell here so yeah and we can click on this icon here to insert a picture or you can go to insert picture from file go to your source folder and then choose the logo picture um, I always include alternative text because they may ask you later to include it so since it's a picture of a logo we can write in logo uh, this basically this text will appear if the picture does not load up for whatever reason so press OK and done okay question 5 place in cell see the image 
proc.png. So C is going to be this one here. So when you click in here, again, you can click on this icon or insert picture from file. And it's going to be this picture here. Okay, so it looks like a CPU um, processor. Okay, so for the alternative text, I'm just going to type in CPU. Press OK. Done. Okay, let's look at the next uh, picture. So an E uh, 2031-board.png. So E is going to be below. So let's click here. Insert picture from file. And it's going to be this one here. Ending in board. And I think it, yeah, we can just write in board for the alternative text. I think it's a motherboard, but it's quite hard to see. It's, it's quite dark. And obviously the picture size is massive as well. So I think this was the picture I identified at the start. Yeah, you can see the dimensions are really big. So most likely we're going to be editing this picture. Um, let's just have a quick look. Um, yeah. So we put, before we put the H picture in, uh, the water picture, uh, we need to make sure each image is displayed as 225 pixels wide whilst maintaining, whilst maintaining the aspect ratio. So I'm going to right click on the picture, click on picture properties, go to appearance, and making sure the aspect ratio box has been ticked, let's type in the size. So it's going to be 225. Okay, and you can see the height has automatically adjusted. Press OK. Yeah. And let's double check this picture here. Picture properties, appearance. Yeah, we don't need to change anything here. So then I think below, so H is going to be this cell here we need to insert the water.png picture so insert picture from file uh, this one here insert let's just type in water check the size of this picture so right click go to picture properties yep the size does not need to be changed done okay and again if you go to the code you should see the dimensions for each picture so if you go to split view you can click on a picture and you can refer to the code okay so here's the alternative text here's the code for the picture so src equal then in speech marks you've got the name of the picture and then you got the dimensions as well okay so that's the first picture um, if I go up Hopefully we should be able to see the dimensions and code for the other pictures as well. So CPU, I think that was the first one, and then water. Yep, done. Save the changes. And what's the next thing we need to do? So we're now we're going to be placing some text in D, F, and I. So D, F, and I are these cells here. Okay, so processes. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to click on this picture um, again, go to picture properties and change the alternative text to processes instead actually. Right. The next one is going to be motherboards. Which will go here. Um, so if you want to double check, um, so F, yeah, F and I, yeah. And again, let's just change the picture properties. Okay. And the next one is going to be a water cooling system. And again, let's change the alternative text for this picture. Okay, we need to set this text to style H2, which refers to heading 2. So we highlight the text, select heading 2. Let's go up. Oops. 
and again if you go to the code you can see H2 has been applied here and to motherboards and to the water cooling system to the main title in cell A he heading 1 has been applied okay so try to get familiar with the HTML as you are, you are doing this um, in, in, a, in a design view because in a practical or in paper one they may ask you some questions based on the uh, HTML okay we've done that now question 7 enter in cell G the text last edited by so G is going to be this cell here and then what do we need to do then on a new line enter your name center number and candidate number and set all this text in cell G to style H3 so if we press enter so I'll write my name center number I'll use 5678 and then candidate number 1234 and this text will be set to H3 so heading 3 okay done question 8 add appropriate alternative text to all images and I've already done this um, as I've inserted in the pictures if you guys haven't you can just simply right click on the pictures go to picture properties and type in the alternative text here or if you go to the code you can just include an extra tag alt equal and then the actual tag for the pictures okay done save the changes and now we're going to be attaching the star sheet H1031-TGC to this web um, to this web page. So to attach the star sheet, you need to have this panel here, manage styles, or if we go to panels, yeah, manage styles. And if you don't see it, you can go to Windows or Panels and then select the option for manage styles. And to attach the star sheet, we're going to click here. And then we can browse for the star sheet. So I'm going to pause this video whilst I, uh, I search for the CSS star sheet. Okay, make sure you go to your source folder, select the star sheet you want to attach, press OK. And right now we can only see one tag for table, and the text has been vertically aligned um, into the center. Okay, so you can see the text has changed. Right, question 10. We need to open up the star sheet 2031-TGC in a suitable software package and edit the star sheet to meet the following specification. Okay, so we can open up the star sheet in two methods. We can have a right click on the star sheet and click edit with Microsoft Expression Web 4, which I'm going to do. Or you can go to file and open and browse and locate the star sheet. Okay, so let's see what we have to do first of all to the star sheet. Uh, we have some settings for the font styles which we can come to later okay we need to have a background picture inserted which we can come to later but first of all we need to look at um, the table settings so the borders I'm just having a quick look okay so let's first of all go to expression and I'm going to right click on table click on modify style and what do we need to set the borders to so the borders have to be set to zero okay so if we go to border and we need to set all of the borders to zero I think if we saw or go up remember guys it did mention um, table borders must not appear on the final web page so that should set that up okay okay that's done and all grid lines are separated okay so what we need to do is go to border collapse so we go to table border collapse and click on separate let's click um, apply so far okay all cell spacing okay within a table is set to 20, 20 pixels So if you go to box, I think, is it box? Um, 
border. One second, guys. Let me see if I can find the option for the cell spacing. So table. Okay, so it's actually it's going to be border spacing. Okay, so let's have a look here. Yeah, so what we need to do is select border spacing and enter 20 pixels. And if we go back to the example here, you can see the spacing between the borders. Okay, so that's what we wanted to do there. Okay, so that's that done. The background color of the table is all black. So now we can go to background and we can just select all black. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. All tables are center aligned in the browser, so we need to set the left and the right margins to automatic. So if we go to box, um, right and left we set to automatic, so the table will be center aligned. Okay, and there's no cell sp um, padding. Okay, so I've checked out previous exam schemes, guys, and um, the cell padding is normally done in TD, which is table data. So I'm going to create a separate tag for cell padding. I sometimes do the padding in table and it works. Um, but looking at mark schemes, I think they prefer you now to use or to do cell padding in TD. Okay, so the table settings are finished. So let's click on apply. Okay, so just before I create the TD. Um, so this is what we changed for the border. The text align was already done. The border collapse is separate. The border space is 20 pixels. The background color of the table is black, so all zeros. The margins right and left are automatic, which will mean the table will be center aligned. So now if I click on new style, I want to create a TD style for the padding. And if I go to box, the padding is going to be set to, yeah, no cell padding. So we can set it, this all to zero. And apply done okay so now we've done the table let's have a look um, at the background image so for the background image we need to insert a body tag so let's create a new style so remember guys the body tag is for your background go to background and then we can browse and select the picture for the body okay Okay, let me double check uh, the background picture again. So, yep, it's going to end in BG. Um, okay, so probably which refers to background. Double click. And what do we need to do? So this picture is, is needs to be set to repeat to fill the browser window. So it's going to be like a tiled effect. So we click on background repeat and then select repeat and then apply and done okay now what we're going to be doing is so we've done this now styles h1 h2 and 3 are green with no red or blue components and have the font uh, i'm not sure we pronounce this uh, cog print if that's not available then verdana or if neither of these fonts are available the browser's defaults sans serif font okay so because these styles all have the same properties we can do it in one go then we can see we have individual settings for h1 h2 and h3 but let's do this in the most efficient way so if we go to expression new style h1 h2 h3 and a font color i'm just going to select black for now Okay, it's going to be set to green with no red or blue components. Actually, we can just click down here and select green. And let's select the two full green. Okay, so the two first characters represent red, so we have no red component. The second characters, so it's R, and then the next set of characters represents green, which has been set to full. And the last two characters represents blue, so R, G, B, and you can see both the red and the blue have been turned off completely. No blue or red components. 
and it's green has been set. Okay, now we're going to set the font style. So if I click on font family, it ends in sans serif. So I'm going to go over the first option. And then I don't think these fonts exist in this software. So you will literally have to type in these fonts here. So let's replace Arial. With the first font. So this font will be used if it's not available then Vedana will be used for H1, H2 or H3. If this font style is not available in a the browser, then a the browser will go for a default sans serif font, which may be Arial. Click apply and you can see the code has been created behind here. Okay, just press done. Okay, finish. Now we need to create separate styles for H1, H2 and H3 to incorporate the different attributes. Okay, so new style. For heading 1. The size will be 36 points. So font size. Uh, we type in 36 and make sure you change this from PEX to PT for points apply the next style is going to be h2 and we need to set it to 14 points and a left aligned so 40 oops so I've just gone there uh, click here 14 if you go to block you can change the alignment so text align is going to be on the left side done and H3 12 points and right aligned. Um, block text align is going to be right. Done. Okay. And what I want to do is save the changes. Yeah. Okay. Add your name, center number, and candidate number as a comment at the bottom of the star sheet. Okay. So to add a comment, you need to write slash and star. And you'll notice it's gone green or a different color. And then we can write our comment. So it's going to be name, center number, and candidate number. Center number I'll use five, six, seven, eight. Candidate number one, two, three, four. And then to close your comment tag, it's going to be star and then slash again. Oops, done. Okay, again, let me save. And we are finished. So Save the style sheet, which I've just done. Take a screenshot of the contents of your style sheet. And this is going to be placed into your evidence document um, as evidence too. So let me just create a place to put the screenshot. Change this to evidence two. Okay. And yeah, so let's take a screenshot of the style sheet. So it's very specific, it's not asking you to copy and paste, we are to take a screenshot. So let's go to expression, make sure we can see all of the CSS including the name. Take a screenshot or use the snipping tool, whatever you guys feel comfortable using. You want to make sure the contents is really easy to understand. So right now it's quite difficult for us to see the code. So what you need to do is basically crop off the part of the code which is not necessary or the part of the picture which is not necessary and then once you've done that um, click on share by mistake just click on crop and then increase the size of the picture uh, maybe not so big yeah and you can see all of the attributes for the CSS tags are nice and clear 
save the changes to the evidence document you can see the file name here at the top here we have the properties for the table the properties for TD and you can see we set the background picture in body H1, 2 and 3 have the same settings, the same colour, the same font family and then we have different attributes for H1, 2 and 3 here as well. Okay, that's evidence 2 done. The next thing we need to do is display the web page in your browser, if necessary resize so all the page can be seen, all the text can be easily read and the address bar is visible. So. If we go back to your web page, you can see the changes have been applied from the CSS. Okay, um, we want to just save this. Then we want to go to the browser. So let's go to Chrome. And what we need to do is for evidence free is take a screenshot showing the web page in the browser. If you need to take more than one screenshot, then you can do. So whilst that's loading up I'm just going to copy and paste this onto the next page change it to evidence free and let's go to the browser again resize so we can see the full web page take the print screen okay, get rid of that Okay, that's done. Make sure you can see the browser window here. You can see the table has been center aligned. All the text is in green. Okay, done. Okay, and then finally, uh, display the HTML source in your editor and take a copy of the HTML source and place this in your into your evidence document. So please, guys. Some people may decide to copy and paste this. You're not copying and pasting this. The HTML source is the HTML. So if you go to code, and you basically need to copy all of this. Um, so in here, you can see the star sheet that's been attached, the table settings, the text which has been inserted, including the formatting, headings one or two, any picture settings, um, any picture attributes including alternative text or dimensions okay so we need to copy all of this code this is where majority of your marks are going to come from and it says take a copy so we copy and paste so this is going to be evidence for Okay, and this is a very typical evidence document we have for the web page section. Uh, we have the screenshot of the CSS, we have the screenshot of the web page in the browser, and then a copy and paste of the HTML code. You don't need to format this, we can leave it as it is. Uh, we can save the changes. Okay, task three we need to print off the evidence document. Okay. Make sure your name, center number, candidate appear, and number appears on every page. Yep, so you can see if you go to File, Print Preview, if we go to the first page, the details appear on every page at the top. You can see the screenshots are nice and clear. And then here's the HTML code, okay, so which goes across a few pages. Uh, Right guys, we come to the end of this video, so make sure you print the evidence document. If there's any mistakes, just go ahead and print it again. Um, please join me in the next video where we do task 4 data analysis. Thank you guys. Please drop your comments below and good luck in your exams if you're taking them next week.